What is up guys? Welcome back to another GeekerWatt video. In this one, I'm going to be building the ultimate $2,000 white themed gaming PC build. A system perfect for smashing through all your favorite titles at 1440p and 4K. I'll be running you guys through all of the parts as I go ahead and put this together before looking at performance a little bit later on to see if this is a build that puts style over substance or whether it really does tick all the right boxes. Let's do this. I'm going to start things off by looking at the motherboard and install as many parts into this component now as possible. This is the Asus Prime Z790A Wi-Fi. I picked this up because it's one of the cheapest but still good performing Z790 motherboards. And of course, wait for it, while it is a black PCB, it's got plenty of white accents. You've got this nice silver kind of VRM cooling design. The rear IO is solid with a two and a half gig ethernet port, plenty of the latest USB Type-C and Type-A, 10 and 20 gigabits, Wi-Fi 6E, and a nice light color scheme. You'll also find this continued theme of heat sinks throughout the entire board, making it a perfect match for this system. And of course, you get all the advantages of the Z790 chipset, overclocking for CPU and memory, plenty of expansion slots without breaking the bank. Inside of the motherboard, I'll be installing this, an Intel Core i5-13600K. It's my favorite mid-range gaming CPU, cheaper than AMD 7600X3D, while providing great performance. You get Intel latest P and E cores all in a package that just makes sense. This is a perfectly good CPU choice for anything up to I would say a 4070 Ti, move through to a 4080 or 4090 and I'd recommend an i7 or even a Ryzen 7 7800X3D. That would be the better choice. I'm also going to pop in at this stage the RAM or memory. This is a DDR5 build and this is an area where to be honest my opinions have changed. Originally earlier on in the 13th gen and especially 12th gen life cycles I was more pro using a DDR4 board and DDR4 memory kit, but the RAM's got a lot cheaper. So that makes DDR5 option a more future-proof selection. Of course, I've gone for two DIMMs with a 32 gig total capacity. If you're buying a budget gaming PC, 16 is fine, but for anything with, I would say, a 6650 XT, 3060 or higher, I would definitely recommend 32 gigs of RAM. The last thing you wanna do is spend a load of money on your graphics card and bottleneck it just because you cheaped out on the memory. It's not something you want to do, and this Vengeance kit comes in white or black. Perfect for this build. I'm also going to go ahead and pop the M.2 SSD in at this stage, for which you'll need a smaller than normal screwdriver. And this is, of course, in this build, a Seagate drive. This is a Fire Cuda 530. It is a little bit expensive, but it's the best Gen 4 NVMe drive you can buy, in my opinion. Our performance testing of this drive gave it some really top-tier results, so I'd recommend checking this one out. Other good options include the WD Black SN850X and Samsung 980 and 990 Pro. Ah, there's the Corsair SSD I was looking for. All you need to do is simply slide the drive into place like so, insert the tallest latch around the drive to make sure it's not going to go anywhere, and return the drive back into place. Couple of screws and that thing's not going anywhere. Once these parts are all into place, I just want to proceed by prepping some of the CPU cooler. This is Corsair's 453rd iteration of the H100i range of coolers, but it's very nice. It's got its updated water block. They're pretty snazzy AF Elite RGB fans for silent performance. It is actually a really, really solid cooler. And I do jest about the fact that they've made quite so many versions of the H100i, but I suppose for good reason, very, very solid design, good price point, but I'll link everything for latest pricing and availability down at the affiliate links in the description below. In terms of the prep that you want to do, you want to grab this bag. Now this says Intel hardware on and contains, you guessed it, all of the Intel hardware. Inside of here, there's a few key pieces of magic. The first piece of magic is this. This is of course the humble backplate. This is gonna clamp through the rear of the motherboard. So grab this, pop it through all of the holes like so, like this, get there in the end, each hole one by one. And once that's been done, you should see four silver threads now poking through. Inside of here, you'll also find these combo units. Now this is a mix of a male to male kind of standoff looking device, if you can sort of see that. And then also a thumb screw. Now save the thumb screws for later, but the male to male posts are actually gonna go through each of the threads you just popped in. So one by one, screw these into place. Now you can do this later on if you really want to. I just simply wouldn't recommend it as it's much less fiddly, believe it or not, now than it is when the motherboard is in the chassis. So a bit of a geekawatt top tip. 
And once all's said and done, you should have yourself a completed motherboard assembly, one that is ready to be transferred into this. Now this looks like a Corsair 4000D Airflow, but it isn't. In fact, it's something a bit more special. This is the Corsair 4000D Airflow RGB QL White Edition. Now what on earth does any of that actually mean? Let me explain. Essentially, Corsair took my favorite things about the 4000 range, AKA the mesh ventilation and the airflow, and combined it with my favorite bits of their RGB range. In fact, they went a step further, added in their top of the range QL edition fans, got rid of all the gray accents to make this fully white. The only thing really that could be improved is better vertical GPU mounting for next gen GPUs like we'll be using today. But beggars can't be choosers and I'm still overall very happy with it. Before moving the motherboard into the case, we just need to go ahead and find all of the standoff holes. Now these are circled in white on the board just here. A standard ATX board, which this is, has nine. Three at the top, three across the middle and three down the bottom. Having a look at the case, and it looks to me like, yes, three at the top, three along the middle, but we're missing one at the bottom. So I'm gonna add that one in and then double check there are no extra standoffs. A fruity bonus standoff is bad news. Like that can be serious trouble for your motherboard. So make sure you've only got the right amount in all the right locations before then screwing the motherboard in. Sorry to be dramatic, just making sure you guys don't end up in a spot of standoff related bother. Next on the agenda then I think is gonna be finishing the CPU cooler. I'm opting for a top installation here on our 240 mil unit. The reason I've gone 240 is that the i5 just isn't that hot. We want some overclocking headroom, but we don't need loads. I'm not trying to push this CPU to six and a half gigahertz. And frankly, it's not gonna get there. So this is just to keep it cool and quiet. And of course, add two more fans for three intake and three exhaust, giving us fully neutral pressure. Something that's gonna be really, really good for temperatures, airflow, and of course, system overall noise. To do this, fans are gonna go onto the bottom of the radiator first. Then the whole unit is gonna screw into the top of the case before finishing off by adding in the water to block and screwing it on with the thumb screws talked about earlier. Really, really simple. Corsair's coolers are my favorite to install on the liquid cooled side of things. So massive props to the yellow pirates at Corsair, maybe, for, for making this easy. That's got to be the best pirate I've ever seen. So it will see. The GPU then is next up, and to say I'm excited to put this in the build is probably an understatement. I also recently put together an all MSI white themed gaming PC, which I thought looked sick and is definitely worth taking a look at. I'll pop the link to that in the card section now. It is worth noting that in the UK, this card is only currently available via pre-built gaming PCs, and I'll link some great options down below. But of course, I would love to see MSI bring this to the mainstream standalone component market in the UK. I'm not sure other regions what this stances, but I'll of course leave all up-to-date price and availability links down below. Now you only have to take one look at this card and I'm sure you will agree it is at absolutely stunning. Now, it goes without saying, there are a few bits of silver and red. It's not totally white. The heat sinks are, of course, your standard. I say silver, but it's a different, like a dark silvery, just heat sink color, but it looks great. The fans are amazing, the side profile. I think actually the bits of gray bring out the white in the places where the white exists. I'm a massive, massive fan. Now it is triple slot. Now what that means is we need to remove a third PCI lane. So taking a quick glance, cursory look, it is this one here that needs to be taken out, so bear with me, before we can then put the GPU in. Now it's based off MSI's really famous, really popular Gaming X Trio design, gives you all the performance of a 4070 Ti at a decent price point and with an awesome color scheme. So let's slide it in. Oh, this is exciting. Apply a bit of pressure, clicks into place before being nicely finished off with a screw that's gonna hold it in, hopefully with no problems. Take a look at that. It is also just worth quickly mentioning that if you're planning on putting a radiator in here, that is gonna be certainly very tight. I'm not saying it wouldn't be feasible, push-pull ain't happening, but a normal standard radiator may work, just worth double checking. To finish this build off then, I need to pop the power supply in, and for this, I've picked up the Corsair CX750F. 80 plus bronze, 750 watts, fully modular, and Corsair do sell this. An optional extra, this is a PCI Gen 5 adapter for the power supply, meaning you can have a nice braided cable, you haven't got to faff around with the really really horrible dongles. Where are they? Is it in here somewhere? I don't know where it is. I'll get some B-roll on the screen. Don't want one of those. This fixes that problem. Corsair are really, really on it, to be fair, with stuff like this. The major props to them. And thanks to them for sending this nice little adapter over. Bear with me while I pop this in to conclude the build portion of today's video. Of course, a full rundown of performance. It's to come. With 
this white themed build put together and looking absolutely fantastic, it's time to make sure that the performance of NSI's Gaming X Trio 4070 Ti in white marries up to the aesthetics. Of course, as usual, we tested a wide range of the latest games, and why don't we start by looking at Warzone 2 to begin with. Here at 1440p high with DLSS enabled and set to the performance preset, and this build delivered 145 frames per second on average. Enough frame rate to deliver a pretty competitive gaming experience at a high 1440p resolution that will of course deliver much improved visual fidelity over 1080p. We do acknowledge though that some people like to play in 1080p and games that are particularly popular at this resolution include the likes of Fortnite. Here at competitive settings, the build delivered 314 FPS on average. Competitive is when you tune everything down to low except the render distance which you set to far for the maximum competitive advantage. Apex Legends also stacked up well, 1440p high, yielded 191 frames per second on average, while 4K dropped the average frame rate down to 141. It's good to see that this build does have some scope at 4K, something we also explored in the next test of Overwatch 2. Here at 4K Ultra, the build delivered 145 frames per second on average. Now, this is the Ultra preset at 4K, so of course higher frame rates are available if you tune that quality preset down a bit. Battlefield 2042 also stacked up very well, 1440p high, DLSS set to performance, and the system brought in 139 FPS on average. And while to wrap things up, we also looked at the likes of Formula 1 2022, 1440p high, ultra high preset, DLSS 3 on, ray tracing on, you name it, we've enabled it, and this build came in with an impressive 170 FPS. It's clear to see then that this is a system that certainly doesn't lack power, and NSI's white 4070 Ti looks the business and performs very well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to get subscribed, latest price and availability will be linked down below. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.